Hello again. Uh, sorry about that. It just seems the demons of the internet are at uh, work today. So I am going to try this, and hopefully everything will work out just fine. Uh, let me go over what I was going to go over in the lecture. Again, remember Vortigern's two rules of potioning. One, never lick the spoon. Two, if you don't know what it is, don't drink it. Anyway, to go into potions, potion comes from the Latin word potionis meaning to drink or a beverage. Uh, they come in four different kinds. There is your standard potion. And then there's also uh, a pastille or tablet. And then there's uh, unguents or oils or like you would apply to, you know, to the ointment, you would apply to the skin. And in essence, which is a volatile oil that you breathe in or a stick of incense is another way of doing that. And it's basically so, it's a potion that is breathed in rather than, you know, drunk or applied to the skin. Now, to quote uh, Arsenius Jigger from, from the text, 101 Magical Elixirs, Potions are not for the impatient, but their effects are usually difficult to undo by any but another skilled potioner. This branch of magic carries a certain mystique and therefore status. Now, potions are brewed from ingredients with magical properties. Property, potions can be used as medicines, antidotes, solutions, poisons, or give the drinker any magical effect from strength enhancement or immunity to flames. Now, the thing is, wild-caught and natural or not a wild-caught, I should say, and store-bought are, can be two different things. I found this out when I was trying to create a portal potion to get back to the castle. I went to the store to use blueberries, and it wasn't quite the same as the cauldron exploded and painted half the ceiling blue. Anyway, <laughs> So, uh, uh, some can create a physical con some can be applied by physical contact, as I mentioned, or create an effect simply by being created, like the regeneration potion. According to former Hogwarts potion master, Professor Severus Snape, potions can <clears throat> bewitch the mind, ensnare the senses, and even put a stopper in death. Hopefully that was a good enough impersonation. Now, Potions have a distinct advantage over typical spells in that they could be used even by the non-magical, provided they have a potion themselves at their disposal. There are also certain magical effects that can only be induced through the use of potions. Some duplicate the effects of spells and charms, but few, for example, Polyjuice or the Felix Felicius, have effects that are impossible to achieve any other way. Generally speaking, witches and wizards favor whatever method works best for, you, for them. For example, I find potions a lot more e easy for me than, say, Transfiguration, a fact which gave Professor Aberfoyle many a headache and sleepless night, I think. <laughs> if you if you ever see Professor Aberfoyle, ask him, or I should say Secretary Aberfoyle, oh, anyway, ask him one of these days you know, about how I did in Transfiguration class. I'm sure he'll have some stories to tell you. Um, so, Potions are not for the impatient, but the effects are usually difficult to undo by any but another skilled potioner. The branch of magic, again, as I said earlier, contains a certain mystique and therefore status. There's also the dark cachet of handling substances which are highly dangerous. The popular idea of potions expert within the brooding community is someone who's is there a community of someone who's brooding and dark and lonely. I consider myself more the mad scientist type. <laughs> Okay, a potion must be brewed correctly to create the proper effects. In certain cases, they are brewed, if they are brewed correctly, they can become poisons. Uh, sometimes they have an opposite effect or an effect you didn't expect. Like, for example, the euphoria elixir, which I had you know, mentioned earlier, that said this potion can cause excessive nose tweaking and singing if you're not careful. But if you add peppermint to the mix, it will alleviate those side effects. Now, uh, for example, uh, there is now a lot of people ask me, well, what if I, you know, if a muggle, because muggles can use potions, and if, they, if they take, if, if a wizard has prepared the potion ahead of time, they can have. Now, people ask, well, why can't, if a, if a muggle gives as the recipe and the ingredients, why can't he not create a potion? Well, the thing is, you actually are infusing a little bit of magic into the, into the mix, which is something they can't do. Uh, you know, contrary to Professor State's belief, there is a little bit of wand waving required in potions. Not a lot, but just a little. That little bit of wand waving 
infuses a bit of magic. That's why, you know, if I if I had the recipe for polyjuice and so did the muggle, at the end of the creation period, I would have a fully functional polyjuice potion. He would have a cauldron full of very toxic soup. So that's that's the one difference there. Now, I, what I was my planning to do was to show you how to identify potions. Let's take, for example, this one. Now, this lovely red violet one that has a, has a very delicate odor to it and it smells wonderful it is a mortentia. Uh, love potion of very, very, very wicked repute. And I, I do not authorize students to create this. If I find out, I will be taking house points if I find people have been using their potion time to create a mortentia unauthorized. Now, the way to identify it is by a color. Identify a potion is by its color. Like, for example, this one has beautiful red color. Uh, sometimes you can use the odor. For example, a mortentia will, will smell like that which you find most pleasing to you. Now, the other thing you also have to look for is you want to look for refraction. Now, refraction is basically holding up to a light, uh, preferably a natural light. Uh, sun or moonlight is best. Uh, and watch how the light plays through the through the glass and on the container and onto the, the, the floor or any surface. That can give you an idea because each, like a fingerprint, each potion has its own specific re refraction index and will show you exactly what it is. Now, there are, it doesn't work on all potions because some potions do not do well when exposed to light. And they are used, they're usually used in special containers. Like, for example, this one that Professor Kobayashi brought me back from Japan. This is a very, oh, I think this is, God, I think, 14th, 15th century uh, potion control base. And it's you know, beautifully ceramic, and it keeps the light from, it, from, it, uh, from hitting the potion. So another way to find out what a potion, what a potion is thing, let's take, for example, oh, let's, let's do our friend Euphoria again, shall we? All right. Is something called viscosity, or AKA the run. Or as a couple of my uh, colleagues during my internship always called it, the runs. <laughs> so that just simply means tilting the liquid ever so slightly. And just watching the play as it goes down, uh, as, the as the liquid is shifting and agitating. Again, just like, uh, like the, the refraction, every potion has its own specific run. And after a while, you'll find out. You'll they'll come to you naturally. You go, oh, and that's amortentia, or that's euphoria. Now, example. Then some are really difficult. To find, like this little friend here, dark, sludgy, and has the obnoxious taste of something foul. It's our old friend Polyjuice. This one again. Just look at the viscosity. It's a dead giveaway. So now this takes time, and I found uh, that sometimes you don't have the time to go hold it up to the light, twist it, you know, twist it, shake it, smell it. You know, it's, but what I am going to teach you today, and that is our, the experiment link, we'll have a potion analyzer, which my uh, uh, which has been a it's an old Fortigern family secret, and I'm going to teach it to you. So the link will be down below. I found a, a Muggle equivalent that we're, you're going to be using Muggle ingredients. So just, uh, but that won't matter in this case because I am going to show you what you need to do to prime the thing and turn them into their magical you know, counterparts. Doesn't work. This thing is not reliable in other circumstances other than to create an analyzer. So I do not recommend you use this in other instances. Now, what you're going to get once you create this potion is it's going to be a layered effect uh, in the colors of the rainbow. Now, the fun thing about this is they'll separate normally if you if you create the potion as for, in the instructions. But even if you shake the thing, eventually they'll settle back down into their respective colors and layers. Now, what you're going to want to do is each layer requires its own in incantation. Now, what you what you will do is Take it outside of 
do you want you want natural light for this uh i would recommend either sunlight or moonlight if you really want to be sure do both so what you're going to do is you're going to take your your, your the container and hopefully it has to be a clear it should be a clear one just so you can see the uh results of the analyzer say the following here are the spells now for red will be rosacea conversus again rosacea conversus yellow flavo conversus flavo conversus green viridi conversus viridi conversus blue indicum conversus indicum conversus and violet hyacinthum conversus hyacinthum conversus and always remember that you will also before prepare, make sure you prepare your, your vessel ahead of time don't use a scouring chart because that is going to take every, every trace of magical goodness out of the container and like i said cauldrons and and potion vessels are like cast iron skillets they always leave fade traces of magic behind which helps create and strengthen and improve your potions so you want to make sure you're using the evanesco charm and remember to do the evanesco charm is you take the wand and you do a seven gesture like one two one two and then we will and then make sure that you are saying the words, Eva Nesco. Eva Nesco. Now, if you've done that well, you'll have your own analyzer. I you know, thank you very much. I do apologize for our other problems with the interwebs. So hopefully they'll be able to post this up there, this up there, and you'll get to see the full lecture and i apologize i look forward to seeing you all soon you know hope, hopefully we'll see you all soon and have a great rest of term signing off